Right now on VFN TV, imagine having only a window of time for great success. Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today because Jonathan Kahn is speaking about how America has a window of opportunity to do something very specific that will determine our destiny and our blessing right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Welcome to VFN TV and the daily VFN radio program where we're keeping the conversation light. That's L-I-G-H-T, light, with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome, welcome to VFN TV. I'm Greg Lancaster. Of course, joining me is John Ramos. Hello. Man, aren't we pumped to be here? Yes, so we're excited to be here. We're excited yes. to be here with you. Yes. We love hearing your comments. We love seeing all your posts yes, on social those media. Yes, shout-outs are awesome, yeah. And please continue to write to us and visit us at vfnkb.com. There's nothing like the positive comment. We love hearing the positive things. Oh, please things. keep sending them, yeah. And write to us at <laughs> friends at vfnkb.com. We love getting your emails and hearing from you. We have so many encouraging things that we hear how God's impacting your life, how the program is encouraging what you heard. It's inspired you, built your faith, and maybe your business, whatever it is. We just love hearing from you. We do. That. Sometimes yeah. people wonder, like, hey, does someone really want to hear from us? We, we really oh do. God. It's us and together. Yeah. Yes. We're doing it together, and, and you're making a difference with us. Totally, totally. Also, I want to remind you, too, before we get kicked off in this program, to remind you about our free book. We have a free book yes. for you. You know, success is what God, listen, it's not even an option. Jesus said, this is how it is. It's like a, a man that owns a business. He gives these talents to certain people. He takes off and he comes back again. He mm. says, what did you do what I gave, with what I gave you? And so, yeah, he expected them to be successful. So much so that Jesus said, this is how the kingdom of God is. And then he said, this one was successful. Enter into, well done, that good and faithful service. I'll give you more. Next one he said, you've been good what was entrusted to you. I'll give you more. Good job. Come on in. But the last one who did nothing with what he was entrusted with, it wasn't how much that he had. It was the fact that he did nothing with it. Listen, you need this book. It's a fight because many things in the elements of the spiritual realm and natural, even yourself sometimes is fighting against yeah. your success in strategies. There are strategies in it to be able to fight for your success. We want to success and we want to give you this book. Go to vfnkb.com and just request that free book today. Strategies, fighting strategies for your success. John, yes. let's talk about Jonathan Kahn and what he's talking about here. Well, this is so important, you know. Many of us are excited about this new season that we're in for America with the election of our new president. And a lot of people are hopeful for a lot of things that, are, that have been going on. But we have this small window, this, this small opportunity for revival, for spiritual awakening in our nation. Because you can fight for so long for things and you finally arrive at the thing you were fighting for, but you're only fighting for the opportunity to do something. To do something. It's not like you <laughs> arrive, arrive. You arrive yeah. at the opportunity to do what you said you would do when things are going bad, yeah. right? And, and people have been under pressure for so long yeah. that the moment that pressure, that foot yeah, gets off tempting. your neck for a little bit, you think you can relax and, and sit yeah. back. And you can't. This is this. We've been set up. We've been given a position to do something really amazing, and that's really to humble ourselves and cry out to the Lord. Yeah, God's God's doing great things in the earth. He's freeing economies. He's freeing nations. He's taking down closed societies and, and opening them up. He's bringing revival across the world, even to America. Yeah. But the thing about it is, great wealth has already started to come. Just like it was prophesied, great wealth transfer that's here and it's coming. You know, jobs. We have so many jobs in America right now. We don't have people to fill, and they're skilled. You know, bonuses are being delivered by companies who ever talked about delivering bonuses before. We had tax cuts. These, the, all this is not for us to go get bigger, bigger houses, bigger That's cars. Right. I mean, God's transferring the wealth because we cried out and said, God, if you will free us from, and we'll talk about some of the things, yeah. then we will give you our hearts. We will, we will do, we'll just, if you we just. We will honor you, yes. Yeah. And so he did. He's answered our prayers, but now, you know, we have to do something. But first, let's just take a look back before Jonathan comes on at yeah. some of the things because if you've been with us for all the years, we've been talking on VFN TV. We're so grateful we, for this moment, for yeah, this season. We need a therapy when everything shifted. It was, it was we were at the point of destruction. Yeah, where it was going to be all over for our nation. And if a nation, if America gets a cold, other nations get the flu. They mm. say, and we were about to literally, you know, be taken down as a nation that we are fundamentally yeah. transformed. Some of yeah. the words were, you know, and so so God slammed things on brakes. And he began to just give us mercy and shift our country. But let's just remember some of the things, John. In the pre, you know, yeah. previous eight years, when you think about just what 
our country and, and the leadership of our country prior was doing. Prior to the current administration in prior office, to which is two President years Trump, ago back. Correct. You're looking back. Just our outlook towards Israel, the leadership's outlook. It was, it was I mean, terrific. You had a Secretary of State, John Kerry, threatening Israel with a third intifada. Can y'all find, find angry birds while we're talking? Oh, my I goodness. Want people to see what it was like. You had... This, the previous administration meddling, all this talk about yeah. collusion and all this talk about, yeah. you know, meddling in elections. Right. We were actually meddling in the elections of in Israel. Israel. Yeah, supporting the opponent of, of Benjamin Prime Minister Netanyahu. Yeah, Netanyahu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we signed this horrific nuke deal that they're still finding out things. In Iran. Yeah, they were. That nobody even knew everything, still know everything about. Yes, billions of dollars given to right. them, all sorts of things, and we're still finding out what actually happened during that time. And they took some of our sailors and forced them to get <sighs> down in the prone position and and, yeah. and just shamed America with that, shooting missiles at our, our, our ships that were yes. out there, nobody responding, yes. leading from behind. Ah. It was sad, you know. Remember the, 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 the persecution that the Christians in this country were, were facing. Well, we, didn't, mean, they didn't talk, we talked about the them. Oh, but yeah. even, in, even in the state of, was it Missouri, where a lady was at work, oh. and they called it workplace violence. Yeah. She was beheaded. In, in America, Missouri, I think it's Oklahoma, maybe. Oklahoma, right? Yes. In Oklahoma, and they called it workplace violence. But if, if, if the supervisor did not have a gun, a gun. by the Second Amendment, more people would have been beheaded. Yeah. I mean, it was just tragic. Yeah. We had Fort Hood. We're all of a sudden uh, our fellow soldiers, one of the soldiers stands up and starts, you know, calling out for another faith outside of a faith in our country and our constitution. And, and We had the IRS targeting citizens in yeah. our country and the organizations yeah. who were harassing them. Well, and, he, and before anybody shot all the our fellow soldiers. Our, oh, our, Fort Hood, yes. Fort Hood shot our shot. Yes. I mean, here they are. You're in the same place, same base. And he started to, sh it, was, it was terrible. And they called that workplace violence. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, we had yeah. that. We had uh, the... All around the world, there was beheadings taking place. All we had James the world. Foley, the journalist uh. that was beheaded, and you know it was just tragic. And I mean, just soldier well, even in Great we Britain. We had the attack in San Bernardino. Yes, the, the previous administration during a Christmas party. Yes, let Americans go to bed that night, not knowing that they could identify who the people were. Because she posted on her Facebook. Yes, letting us. Go to bed at night, not wondering there's gonna be yeah. more attacks across the country when yeah. all we knew was a terrorist attack. They couldn't even say radical Islam. Right. Could I even say those words? These were really dark, dark times. And even our leader at that time said, We can take another one. You know, we can take another hit. Yeah. And it's like this is the new norm. The yeah. quote was this is the norm. And even that the constitution is like which is like a, a the aquarium that your fish are in and your water are in that holds everything together for your fish aquarium, that's the constitution. Yeah. And they were calling the constitution outdated. They were saying we need to get rid of it. We need to change it. It's a list of negative rights, and it was they were going to do. If we do away with that, we didn't have a country. That's right. And so, so now, and the flag was being dishonored, and the, I mean, the history, the founding fathers. There was nothing good being said well, about the, the founding fathers. The stirring up of strife. There was so much yeah. polarization. Anything uh, that could be divided was being divided. Yeah, I mean, we had literally our police officers who are first being line shot of defense and murdered, murdered in the streets. Yeah. Murdered, making them seem like they were these yeah. horrific people. Yeah. In the last two years, have you seen any kind of these major uprisings? Things have just started but to the, change. The feeling of safety, no, but it's just, you know, it's what we're going to be talking about. God has just moved ma majorly in this. And before we go to break, because we're going to you're going to hear from Jonathan Kahn, but I want you to just take. We call this Angry Birds, but it's actually that our encounters, our our former president meeting uh, the leader of Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and understand ever how you treat Israel is how you're treating God, the apple of His eye. And he was always snarling and angry and looking down on. He even punched him in his chest with his finger poking at him like this. And it's like, what are you doing? These are our friends. But I want you to look back because we're going to talk about this is a window of time that God has given us. And we've got to respond to it. But let's just take a quick glance back at our former president and how he treated Israel. Watch their faces. You know, you, you said the other day to Jeffrey Goldberg in an interview that you plan to be around 20 years from now. Yeah. Therefore, you'll feel responsible if Iran gets nuclear yes. by then. And I just realized perhaps you plan to be many years more around, if only to postpone the moment that Bibi comes speak at the funeral. <laughs> that was one of my better jokes. You enjoyed the punch, did you? That was, uh, that, that, that was a good joke. I, you know, can we skip the part in which you tell me there's nothing personal between you two? Yeah, you know, I, I will tell you this. I, 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 when I'm with Bibi, we have good conversations. They're tough, they're forceful, we disagree, but 
Uh, I enjoy jousting with him. Did I, you enjoy I, I the meeting? You remember the meeting four years ago here at the White House when he took the time to speak about some chapters in Jewish yeah. history? I could see your jaws locked. Oh, no. I think the, I was probably just uh, uh, hungry and waiting for lunch. <laughs> There's no doubt that, that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and I come from different political traditions and have different orientations. That's just a hit of what it was like. It was a totally different mindset of our country. And it was, a, it was like a shame of who we were, a shame of who Israel was. And we're, it's amazing the things, we've got to go to break right now. But now, understand, God had mercy and he shifted things. It's not a political thing. God has heard the prayers. Very specifically, yes. heard in our previous program. If you missed it, you've got to catch that program. A word that came from Kim Clement in 2015 that said, God has heard the prayers from Pennsylvania Avenue. He's heard the prayers from the White House. He's heard the prayers of America. And he's responding to those prayers. But when we get back from this break, we're going to hear from Jonathan Kahn. Jonathan Kahn is the author of the book's Harbinger series and all that is Paradigm, right? Paradigm shift. No, paradigm. It's talking about Jezebel and Ahab and all these different things in Jehu. But we get back from this break, we're going to hear firsthand about this window of time. We've got to shake ourselves. We've got to realize it's good for a reason so we can do what God wants us to do in the season that he's given us. Join us after the break. We'll be right back. I minister with a group of people that I just absolutely love because all of us, we get tired. We want to quit every week and we look at each other and go, no, 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 let's, let's go. Let's go talk to some more people. I know we were all rejected yesterday. Let's keep going. That's what the body of Christ was supposed to do. We were supposed to gather together to stir one another up to encourage, put courage into each other. And that's what this is about. Man, our, our prayer is that God would do something in our midst that we really could walk away with, with greater courage. I'm not the son of God because you say I am. I'm the son of God because God says I am. I'm not confident because of what I can do. I'm confident because of what God says he will do. I'm not forgiven because I've earned acceptance. I'm forgiven because God says he has forgiven. Help me preach. I'm not going to do it because I think I can. I'm doing it because God said I could. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome back. We were just talking prior to the break, if you missed it, about God has delivered us from a major, major conditions, difficult decision. It was just craziness. We talked about all that stuff. We don't get to that again. But you think about it, what he did really wasn't an answer to prayer. It literally was what? A window. A window of time. Yeah, he answered for a reason. This is a window of time. As a matter of fact, this is Jonathan Kahn here talking on the Jim Baker Show, talking specifically about, you know, Jehu and, and understand who Jehu was. Jehu was the one that came in and dealt with the Jezebelic Ahabish government over Israel, and he dealt harshly with it. He dealt with it. He, he removed the element. He drained the swamp. He right? drained the swamp. <laughs> he really did. And uh, But there was a window of time for Israel to be able to do something. And in the same analogy to understand, Believe me, this is a window of time for us to do something. This is Jonathan Kahn right now. Take a look. But so the point with Jehu was he was used to stop it from being sealed, to stop, to give the nation a reprieve, give the nation a window of time to repent. Now, Jehu wasn't the answer, and it, it, the answer was repentance, and the answer is revival. The election, the rise of Jehu wasn't the answer, it was the window. The election wasn't the answer, it's the window. The window can be you either, what, the question is, what are we going to do in this window? If we stay apathetic, if we say, oh, it's okay, we're not going to get, well, if we don't spread the gospel, we don't go full blast, if we don't stand and be bold, then the window's going to close. Yes. And then if the, window, and, and if the window closes, we're going back to where we were, but maybe even with a vengeance. So the thing is that now, this is the crucial time we are, most important thing, we, are, we have a window of time now, brothers and sisters, window of time, where, we, where there must be revival. If there's not revival, there is no hope for America. This is the window, and the thing is that right now, you know, the political landscape changed, but the moral landscape has not changed. The cultural landscape has not changed. The social landscape, the spiritual landscape has not changed for America. 
In fact, in fact, you know, what you're seeing on television, it's gotten worse. I mean, that, that's, why, that's why things are so divided. That's why the, much of the nation hates Donald Trump, because you got one thing going on there, and you got believers, you know, they have, a, they have a window, and the White House. But then you have the rest of the culture. And if we don't get to that, you know, the thing, for instance, there's a poll, you know, for, for, for abortion, by the way. For years, actually, people were shifting away from abortion as far as their views. When they did polls, mm -hmm. they were actually shifting, saying, uh -huh. they're for life. That's changed now. That is from 2010, it's going strongly towards abortion among the millennials, among, among the youth. Uh, the numbers of Americans who are saying that they are Christian was 83% in 2003. It's now 72%. That's a 10% drop. That's gigantic. I mean, that's a change. I mean, that's a change like what you see with the Roman Empire becoming Christian. It took centuries. This is taking a decade. Um, evan white evangelical Christians in a poll w went from 21% in 2003 of the population to 13% now, 13%. Oh. Those who were for the redefining of marriage in the 1990s, it was two to one against, two to one against. Now, ladies poll, it's two to one for. Oh my. So now the people who are just, you know, that way, and when you look at the younger generation, this is the future, look at how they stand with Christianity, Look at how they are with marriage. I mean, just even living together or marriage. Look at how they are with all these issues, the Bible, every Israel, every issue. And it's scary. It's something like, you know, it, it's bigger. These numbers, their numbers are bigger than these numbers. Uh, they are saying that it is, all, you know, it's heading to one out of every two children now among the younger, uh, who are born to younger parents are born without marriage at all. That, that's the next America. If things don't change, that's where it's heading. This is, this is why you're seeing all the conflict. Oh. Because you have Donald Trump, you have believers who have, who have freedom, just like they did with Jehu. He opened that window for them to preach the gospel. You got that going on in one part. But then you have the rest of the, the, rest of the culture that's going, continually going down. And that's why they hate him. They mock him. They, I mean, if he was a Democrat and if he was for other policies, they would put up with him. But they mock him. They hate him, just as they also mock God. I mean, you, you would never have that when we were growing up. They never mocked God, never mocked Jesus, but you're seeing that. So we are at this crossroads right now, mm -hmm. gigantically. And so the question is, so what happened with Jehu? Here, what, what happened? Jehu, the Bible says, he was a mix. He was a mix. When it came to Baal worship, when it came to these things, he was great. He ended Baal worship. He went total full, full blast. He did it. But when it came to, there were some other compromises, and I'm not saying it has to be this way, but here's the warning. With, other, with Jehu also, though, it says he did not destroy the golden calf. He still kind of gave acknowledgement to the golden calf. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between Baal worship and the golden calf? Well, Baal worship came from outside. It was a foreign thing from Phoenicia. So, but the, but the golden calf, that was, that was Israel's patriotic. That's when they broke off from the old. That was their independence. They worshiped the golden calf. So, so in other words, so Jehu went against the foreign sin very much, but, but he sometimes, he failed when he put nationalism ahead of God in this response. So, so he, he, he ended up being a mix. So, but here's the thing. So regardless of what happens with Donald Trump, we have to pray for him that he doesn't compromise. Right. And it's amazing. And thank God that God has put Christians around him, yes. which has made all the difference. But also, what happened to Israel? We don't know that Israel ever had revival in the window that God gave it. We don't know that it did. Mm. So what happened to Israel? Israel continued after Jehu, continued to go down, down and down until it intersects with the days of the harbingers. Because that, when you read the harbinger right. and you read the paradigm, it's all taking place in the same place. It's all taking place in the northern kingdom of Israel, just at two different times. The paradigm leads up to, the, uh, up to Jehu. The harbinger leads from Jehu to the end. Listen, revival is crucial. And, and if, you say, if you say, well, when is it going to be? The, the thing is this. If, you will, if each of you will commit to revival in your own life, the revival begins. Okay? Uh -huh. If we each would commit to be living, what would it be if we were living in revival? How would we pray? How would we walk? How would we talk? How would we spend our time? That is the way we have to be. We have to, we have to choose revival, not just wait for it. Choose revival, live it, pr spread the word, be bold, and revival will begin. So we must take this seriously or else the window's going to close. And by the way, and if the window, before I, before I get to the stars, the, the window, the, here's another thing about the window. Because the culture is still going, the, going this direction, but we got this window, it's going to build up pressure, almost like a dam. So if the window closes, if we don't have revival, 
when the, if, then the dam is going to break. Then when it comes back, it's going to come back faster, stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what we, we totally, we need revival. This is exactly what Jesus told us. He said, listen, if God delivers you, mm -hmm. if he delivers you, but yet you don't choose to fill yourself with the things of God, and you just choose to say, well, I've been delivered from that, he says it'll come back seven times worse. Everybody has their free will. Even your adversary has their own free will. And when your adversary has been pushed back, they're going to come back stronger because they fear you even greater in your God. They think we're going to have to come over seven times worse. And they're not going to give any leeway. We think the last reign of that situation was bad. You had not seen anything yet. Understand that there's a battle going on between God and between Lucifer mm. over the souls of men. And those who aren't with God are with, that's right, not with God, whether they know it or not. When you're going the way of your flesh and the way that you think it needs to go, the way of pride, that is actually following the ways of, of Satan. Satan, Lucifer. And, and when we repent, we say, you know, Jesus, you're my Lord. I'm going to follow you. We make mistakes. Things happen. But we ultimately say we're going to follow, follow you. And it's just that, that form of total dependency on God and respect for other people. Now, I know we've got to go to break, but listen, that, we've seen that so much. We're so surprised, you know, of that. It's like, this is the moment we should be screaming out and hollering and telling everybody, this is, this is great, take advantage of it. But we have people right now, even what, what God has done, complaining about people standing up for righteousness. And, quote, pastors are saying, pastors are saying specific things about other pastors. Like, come on, we're on the same team, come guys. On. And so we have this limited amount of time, and you would think, because we're praying for revival in Iran, we're praying for revival in China, we're praying for revival in North Korea. Well, guess what? This is what the Lord said prophetically, and you heard it on our previous program. You can go back and check it out. But through Kim Clement in 2015, he said, these things are going to happen in the world. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. But he said specifically that the church in Iran, that's underground in Iran, is stronger and going, doing better than the church in the West, in America. Mm. It's us that needs to be awakened. It's us that it, we're like the rich young ruler, you know, we're like the rich young ruler who says, we've done this and we've done this and we've done this. But, but the Lord said to him, he says, yeah, but one thing, America, your love for money, your stuff and things, right? And he says, one thing. And the guy says, what is it, Jesus? He says, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. For his case, that was his God. His God was money. Jesus said, you can't serve them both. And so we have to make up our mind. God's not going to accept saying your job was more important than your obedience. He's just mm. not going to accept that. No, if you give your job to him and you work for at that job as unto him, and you're the light and you're, you, you represent him there, you know, by, by loving, being kind, and all the things that he says do, then, then that job is his job. It's not your job. You're, you're giving it over to him. And that's what we need to do. We talk about that VFNKB at VFNKB.com. You can find out more details on that. We want to hear from you. You comment below. Share with us your thoughts. Email us at friends at vfnkb.com. We'd love to hear from you. you know, what are you thinking about this? Are you ready to be awakened? And I know this. I know we've got to go to break. They're telling me to go to break. But understand this, that, that uh, the Lord showed us so many things. And He showed me some things that were literally, just like when Jehu came in, He divided everybody up for who was this God, who was that God, who was this God, and who was for God. And He gathered them together. When He did that, he went, then, then Jehu went through the crowd to find out to make sure none of God's people were mixed into the other people who had these other gods. And then all of a sudden, destruction came. You don't want to be found in a crowd of people, you know, compromising and being ashamed of God in regards to that. Because, I mean, God's going to deal with it. That word from Kim Clement in 2015 talks about God's going to be dealing with yeah. these things. So we got to make up our mind. Whose side are we on? It's like the days of Elijah and top of Mount Carmel. And God's bringing everybody to a point, and the false prophets are shouting out from their television stations, going, "Jesus is not Lord," and and this is this all the wrong is right and right is wrong, and that's what they were doing. They were shouting out all these prophetic things from a high mountain, which is their form of communication. While Elijah stood there and just listened, but when it was all said and done, God had one word, and it was fire from heaven that came down, and He said, "Choose who you're going to serve." That's a simple. It's not about figuring out some complicated formula for revival. It's about bowing your knee in repentance to God, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, saying, God, I am all yours. I'm all in. I'm going to learn your ways. I'm going to read the Word. I'm going to go to iabide.org and get my abiding plot to abide with you. I'm going to get on Emmaus Road so I can be your disciple. You call me to be a disciple, which is to know your ways and follow them, which you can find at VFN or Vine Fellowship Network.org. Click on 
you know, Emmaus Road. It's time to get serious. Listen, the reason why you got to get serious is because God's going to hold you accountable for mm. you. I mean, That's you have right. to understand. It's not, you can't blame no it on your daddy. No you can't blame it on your mama. You can't blame it on your brother, your neighbor, your pastor, your apostle, your president, or anybody. You're going to stand personally before God and have to answer for your life, which is cool to know now because now you can repent personally. This window of time, you have it. What are you going to do with it? Listen, after the break, we're going to talk more about a success secret. But uh, Join us after the break. We'll be right back. As a supervisor in the workplace, can I pray with a coworker? This is Law and Justice with Jay Sekulow. I'm a supervisor in an office, and I was recently told that I cannot express my opinion in any way in matters regarding faith or religion or politics. I was also counseled that I cannot pray um, with staff members in or out of the office, you know, if they approach me. Well, the idea that your workplace would be a religious-free zone is just absolutely incorrect. And uh, a Bible study or praying with another employee, as long as it's not disruptive to the workplace, that is really what the biggest issue is. We've got great resources, by the way, available on our website at aclj.org. And I'll tell you what I'll do. You hang on the line here, Kim. I'm going to get you in touch with our legal staff at the American Center for Law and Justice, and we're going to get you some help on the situation right away. The American Center for Law and Justice is dedicated to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms. Visit us at aclj.org. That's aclj.org. Here we are. Yes, VFN TV, the daily radio program, a network that God is building through your gifts. Amazing thing, because it can't be built by human hands. Things that God does cannot be built by human hands. So make sure that you join in and just offer up at VFNTV.com and sponsor and become an underwriter today. Listen, we are shining the light, keeping the conversation light on all who want to be in the light, who listen, our audience. That's right. VFN TV and the Daily Radio Program, a network that God is building through your love gift. Sponsor today, partner today, become an underwriter. Go to VFNTV.com and follow the prompts. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome back. Welcome back. Listen, it has been a powerful program. I want to encourage you, you know, simple things. God loves us. God has a plan for you. All he wants you to do is just own it. Own what you've done and say, God, I'm sorry. And he says, if you'll repent, he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then he'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins, heal their land, which is our nation, and we'll be blessed. So that's all it takes. He's not trying to do something, you know, horrific. He's trying to bring us to a place. He's going to bring us to a place of repentance, according to John Paul Jackson. We're that's going right. to get there. But I want to pray with you right now. Father God, I just thank you for our audience. We just bless them right now. We bless them with health, God. We bless them with the courage to repent, Father God. The ability to own their own issues, Father God, and say, God, I've sinned. I've fallen short. God, forgive me. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I'm going to quit blaming my walk on everybody else, and I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to abide. I want to encourage you to begin to do that. Go to iabide.org and get your abiding plan. And we just want to speak by faith. God, we thank you that abortion has ended in America. We thank you, God, that revival is here and that Third Great Awakening is here in Jesus' name. God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.